Sorry, I'm just appreciating my beauty. Hi friends, my name is Financial Insecurity because I got Taylor Swift tickets from my friend and you don't want to know how much it was. This week is not letting anyone rest. First Taylor Swift, then Twitter, and now, now I just found out about this after I just did two rants about two different communities. For those who don't know, I've done a video about Ollie Lennon in the past and this was when they wanted to be, sorry, they identified as Korean and went by core slash Ian pronouns. As you know, I got angry at it, <laughs> as did a lot of people, respectively, but there's some new news out and I have not gone into it yet. We're gonna go through this blind, okay? You and me together. We'll get through this together, okay? I'm holding hands with you right here. For those who don't know, Ali Lennon is a quote-unquote public figure and has been in a lot of heat with like several different communities throughout the years. As always, we're gonna discuss this. Am I trying to take this seriously? I actually am, okay? I'm trying my best. But when someone has a running history of being a troll or trying to get a response on the internet, I'm not gonna have a lot of respect for that. It doesn't matter how much of a dick you are, I will at least respect your pronouns. But I don't know this person's pronouns right now because I'm pretty sure they changed again, which is not a bad thing. I just wanna clarify. They actually reached out to me after my first video. They asked to collab and I was like, they're gonna they're gonna take my skin and peel it off and wear it for themselves in a skin suit. But they've recently deleted it. I don't see it in my Instagram DMs, but I have the screen. It existed, okay? It was a real thing, y'all. I'm not going crazy. Anyways, let's talk about this. Let me just move my ass. So this is his Twitter profile. When did- wait, what? Hold on. <laughs> when did he become Christian? This kind of reminds me of- remember when Lo Anthony became Christian suddenly and then he really started pushing religion, but he also became homophobic as a gay person? I'm getting that energy. This is his pinned tweet. I want to see what's going on. I'd as a Korean woman, but six months later he's decided he's had enough, now he's tr transitioning back to- He can't- he can't even- he's tr 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 transitioning. <laughs> can't even say it. For those who don't know this context, Tucker Carlson is known as a very traditionally Republican person, especially on Fox News. If you don't know what Fox News is, they basically sucked Trump's dick for a good four years back in the election. So that's all you need to know. Ollie London joins us tonight. Ollie London, thanks so much for coming on. Um, so why did you decide to become a Korean woman? Who told you that was possible? So obviously I've had a difficult time with my gender identity struggles. I was never unhappy with how I looked. So I started changing. I started dressing as a Korean woman. And I realized that was a big mistake and I just want to be, I realized that was a big mistake and I just want to be oh. a boy. But you know, is it any wonder people like me and young people want to change their gender when we have the normalization of this in our schools in this country? Children are taught from a young age, from the age of five in some cases, that it's okay to change their gender. It's okay to, you know, wear a skirt. It's okay for a boy to use a gender neutral toilet when it puts girls at risk. This is... is is this really a low Anthony situation? Like, is Ollie Lennon turning Republican, y'all? And schools are teaching about toxic masculinity that eroding the alpha male, the alpha straight male has been eroded. You know, Tucker, what Good. happened years ago when kids used to go to school, they used to idolize Superman and astronauts. Now kids are being pushed this radical ideology. They're taught to idolize weak men like Harry Styles. I don't get paid enough for this. I truly, truly, what am I doing sitting down listening to this bullshit? This is my job. This is his job. Actually, no, actually, let's look at this. What was the quote? We are now idolizing weak men like Harry Styles. So it's so back and forth because first he says like, how else am I supposed to act now that children are being taught? You can wear a dress if you're a man. You can use a gender neutral bathroom. God forbid there be a gender neutral bathroom, not even for political reasons, but like just so it's easier. Cause you know what in New York City, you know what people don't have time for? Building two separate bathrooms, okay? There's one big bathroom, it stinks, and you're gonna go in there no matter what your gender is. Everyone has the equal opportunity of seeing how disgusting a public bathroom is. I just don't get, I, I, I'm gonna keep listening, hold on. Weak politicians like Beto O'Rourke. Why is this happening, you know? And is it any wonder people like me fall victim to this, that I had all this surgery, I tried what to victim? change. No, because, you know, hold on. <laughs> what victim are you? How do you fall victim to a younger generation's ideologies? From what I'm getting, it sounds like he's saying, they made me do it because they liked Harry Styles now and they like people who dress in skirts and now I felt this need to become one. 
or some I don't know. I, I kind of felt victim to this mentality. I'm an adult, but you know, these kids can't make these decisions on their own. They're, be they're being pushed this radical agenda, and I'm grateful that I've come out the other side. This is the only reason he got on Fox News. There's no way in hell, like, someone like me would end up on there willingly. I'm grateful I found God, but you know, I want to speak up for these kids that are confused with their gender. A lot of kids have gender dysphoria, and you know, that wasn't a thing 20 years ago, Tucker. This is may, what's may, being taught in the school system. May I ask you a question, and I'm not mocking you at all, it's a sincere question. Did it make you happier? Did you feel when you, quote, transitioned and started living as something that you weren't, did you feel like you were that thing? And were you at peace inside? You know, I've never... Ollie London wants to put an end to children being pushed into gender-affirming surgeries. You know, this is a bigger topic than just Ollie London now, thank God. Let me talk about something other than this person. I feel like a lot of people are focusing on like the surgery part. There are a lot of factors you need to be able to get to the point of doing gender affirming surgeries as a child. First of all, it's already a small amount of people. Like not every child wants to have gender affirming surgeries. It's the people with gender dysphoria or just anything with their body that they're not comfortable with. Two, you need a parent to approve that, which is still very rare nowadays and please don't even say oh but they can get an exception by going to the black market and shit a child's not gonna do that and if a child does that i blame that parent for being a stupid parent children going off the deep end and getting like taboo surgeries that aren't medically approved is not the majority at all so don't give me the three people did this in the world type of thing three you need to afford it do you know how expensive surgery is, especially in the US? If you don't have insurance, good luck. And I doubt every parent's gonna sign off on that. And also, in a lot of states, because of what's happened recently with the Supreme Court, you are not allowed to get gender-affirming surgeries. That's taken off. So you literally have to be in a different state to do that. I always love it when people take like this type of topic, like, oh, surgeries specifically for trans people, or like children going to drag brunches. What about the children? And then it's, ju it's just an excuse to be homophobic and just mainly push their agenda of we want to take away gay rights in general. They mask it by saying, oh, think about the children and think about what's going to happen to the children. You just want to take away our rights. Just say that. Be upfront about it. I can at least respect someone who is like, yes, I do hate gay people, than someone who tries to jump around the bush and act like they don't, when in reality they do. They're just too scared to say it. How many more minutes is this? A minute left? Really found happiness until recently. Um, so I was always you know, struggling with my looks, happiness. as most kids do, especially as a teenager between, you know, the age of 11 to 13, kids change. And kids start True. to question themselves. They start to question their looks, their identity. True. They have self-esteem issues. This is True. normal. I used to really hate the way I looked, so I thought having all this surgery, trying to become a girl, dressing as a girl, trying to be more feminine, I thought that would make me happy. I've realized that was a big mistake, and I feel like, you know, if I was born 40 years ago, I wouldn't have done this. It's what the woke culture is pushing these days. 40 years ago, what is that, 1980 then? I didn't live that time. But I'm pretty sure a majority of doctors would not have said yes if you even wanted to get surgery. What was that thing again? Oh yeah, they hated trans people back then and still do today. That was also during the AIDS epidemic. So like, if they didn't even care about a lot of gay men, they're not gonna care about you wanting to get surgery. How about this? They just didn't care about queer people. That's just, just say that. End it there, okay? No shit you wouldn't be able to get this surgery back then. What you define as a woke culture, which is people being more sensitive to things or people finally speaking up about how they feel, that's because the world is becoming a more accepting place. And to an extent, I will talk about woke culture in the sense of like, yes, some TikTok people really do make me want to jump into running traffic, but that is not the people we are talking about today. This is people who are literally just feeling shit about their own bodies because they just have gender dysphoria and that's nothing wrong. It's just a sad reality people have. So why are you demonizing these people so much, Ali London, when you used to want to do all this stuff? I'm so confused. I just want to know, like, what church did he go to to suddenly shift like this? Continuing to allow biological males to compete in women's sports and women's beauty pageants is grossly unfair. Y'all, he is literally appealing to, like, the most conservative Republicans here. I have trained three Miss Universe fi- Have you?! To allow someone, a biological male, to walk in and win is wrong. I am so confused on what's happening in my life. Also, I don't keep up with Miss America, but if Miss Greater Dairy really did win, good on you, okay? I love that for you, as you should. Look at this queen, Ollie Lennon. You can never beat that, because guess what? You're not Asian. I'm <laughs> Y'all, this is 30 minutes ago. He's going on and on about this 
this queen. Do you not have a job or something? Like, is this all you can do? I say that as I'm literally doing this. God can save you during the darkest of times. Listen, as much as I want to respect religion, this is a whole other topic. It's very hard for me when people like this exist. If you literally use religion as a way to be bigoted, fuck off. There is nothing God cannot do. There are some, because he can't make you Korean. Me actually transitioning and having feminization surgery versus Dylan Mulvaney doing the bare minimum to become a girl and wait. I love how Dylan just exists in the world and gets shit on. Great society we live in. For those who don't know, Dylan Mulvaney is a very popular TikToker who is very open about being trans. I think they're almost at 10 million. They recently went to the White House actually. And it's like, it's so refreshing to see someone just be that successful. Because it does make me a little bit hopeful that like, yes, trans people can have a space they can be mainstream as well and there is the conversation of what if dylan was not white would they be as popular unfortunately no but please don't use that as a way to like be mean to dylan so funny how activists are trying to say i was never trans yet i did so much to become trans dylan has done nothing first of all you don't know shit about what dylan has done what they want to make publicly is her own, like her, that's her business also i know for a fact she's done more because she's already been public about doing more than just what is it? Feminization surgery in terms of what? Like, what are you even showing here? This is laser hair removal, girl. She has been open about scheduling more surgeries in the past on her TikTok if you keep up, but you don't, do you, Ollie? It's day 172 of being a girl, and I am with the top of the top surgeon, Dr. Lee, here in Beverly Hills, and we're talking FFS surgery. It's looking like the surgery is gonna happen this December. Also, another big red flag actually transitioning. Hmm. You do not have to transition to be trans. A lot of people still believe that, but that's very classist because you literally need a lot of money to do that. Also, a lot of people have no reason to. They just are comfortable with their body, which is amazing because we still push people who are very passing, which means like they get the surgeries to make them look more biologically like a woman. Probably not saying the best words, but like I hope y'all get what I mean. Passing is just appearing as the stereotypical female body. What is the norm? what is usually presented to us in society. Tits, long hair, you know, not a strong jawline like a man. Have a big butt, hourglass, I don't wanna see broad shoulders, like that type of stuff. And because of that, and I'm not saying this is a trans woman's fault for just transitioning and being more passing, that's not their fault. I'm saying this is a culture thing because people who are more passing are always more uplifted and are usually more successful. People who are trans and have gender dysphoria but can't necessarily afford the surgery or don't want to get it, you develop this mindset of, oh, if I'm not that, I'm nothing. If I want to be recognized in public and not be hate crimed, I have to look like that. If I want to be accepted by the society besides the queer community, I have to be that. And even within the queer community, there's a lot of people who have too many opinions on trans people's bodies who are not trans, which is why I don't want to step in because I'm like, literally, it's supposed to be do whatever you want, whatever makes you happiest. For example, there was recently a new Apex Legends character, this is a game, and the person is trans and they're voiced by a trans actor. And what's amazing about this, from what I've heard, specifically Luminum, shout out to her, she's a great streamer. She said, I love the fact that this person doesn't sound so biologically female with like a high-pitched voice. They have more of a deeper voice. Because that's a reality. Not every trans woman is going to sound like a cisgender woman with a stereotypical high-pitched voice is what I mean. Not every trans woman is going to have big tits and look like Miss Fortune and Seraphine and all of these anime big titty goddesses. And that's okay. So no one should pressure them to have to do that in order to be fully trans, Ollie. The same people that praise Dylan Mulvaney as a girl, and I love how you put quotes in that, and slam anyone that dares call him a man are the same people that are now trying to say I was never trans. Dylan Mulvaney has done nothing to be a trans woman. No surgery, nor hormones, nothing, just laser hair removal. I'm sorry, Ali, have you spoken to Dylan? Do you know if she's taking hormones? First of all, I never said you weren't trans. It's not on me to speak about that because I don't know your experience. It's just when you make a mockery of what the queer community has fought so long for. I'm not saying I fought for it, by the way. I'm talking about the people who protested and have died just for us to have basic rights. We are finally getting to the point where I can say, oh, I my pronouns are anything because I don't give a shit. But for you to say, oh, I'm core slash Ian and you just want to be Korean. You also said something about some days I wake up and I feel like Jimin. Some days I wake up and I feel like Rosé from Blackpink. How do you expect people to react and treat you seriously when all you do is make a mockery of Asian people? Oh, speaking of new pronouns, it's um anti slash woke y'all. The mayor of San Francisco has to be the most incompetent mayor in America. San Francisco has the highest rates of crime. I don't think that's true. <laughs> Every day elderly Asian Americans are violently assaulted and criminals walk free. 
You'd understand, wouldn't you, Ollie, about being Asian American? Instead of tackling issues, the mayor is doing this. What is this? San Francisco's $1,200 a month handout to low-income trans people tells them to choose from 134 genders and pronouns, and they can pick as many as they want. This article should have also said in parentheses derogatory. <laughs> Why do I feel like Ollie London, six months ago when they lived as a Korean woman, would have said, oh my god, I love what's happening here. Ollie, just blink twice if you need help. Like, who did this to you? When did you become Christian? Trans activists that keep pushing the breakdown of gender norms and keep forcing kids to be confused are all indirectly working for communist China. <laughs> Breaking down society and family values benefits China. It weakens our society. We need to restore strong gender norms. I'm literally getting flashbacks to like COVID, y'all. I'm getting flashbacks to hashtag stop Asian hate. I'm getting flashbacks to when people call me chink in the streets during COVID. Like this is verbatim what a conservative Republican would say to me. Let's break down the tweet, okay? So apparently trans activists are all indirectly working for communist China. I don't know if you know much about communist China. Yeah, it's not good, but if I see another tweet somehow linking back to communism in China and just using it as an excuse to hate Chinese people when y'all love Korean and Japanese people apparently because it's always Korea, Japan, good, China, bad when everything y'all use and wear is owned by China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I don't think communist China even likes trans activists. Um, I don't know if you've heard, <laughs> but they still believe that gay people are sinful. <laughs> Like if I flew to China and I dipped my toe, stepped foot on Chinese land, I will be the antichrist of China. I'm kidding y'all, but like the point is, China is still very conservative about queer politics as well. Like I think being gay was a mental illness until 2001. So trust me, Ali, like from a Chinese person, Communist China doesn't give a shit about trans activists. They just want you to continue using TikTok. Also, please specify it. It's the Chinese government. It's not Chinese people in general. If someone is watching this and like y'all are convinced that every Chinese person in China is trying to like take over the world and fuck America, that is not true. There's a reason my parents immigrated here. I don't think y'all realize that um, they don't even have Google. They have Chinese Google. It's all propaganda. It is specifically marketed to warp their mind and even if a Chinese person is aware that like, oh, this is bad, they don't speak up about it because if you do, the police will find you. Why else do you think COVID never happened in China? The police will do anything. Kids don't need 500 different pronouns. Kids just need an honest education that benefits their cognitive development. See, okay, on some parts, like, I'm agreeing, but at the same time, I'm like, there is a notion of fuck trans people underneath the tweet. Stop putting labels on kids, let kids be kids. This I actually do agree with. He also said above this that I also agree with, the constant focus on self-identifying is what is destroying society. Do I agree with Ollie as a person? No, but the tweet itself, to an extent, yeah. A lot of children are pressured to focus on their pronouns and what it means to be them because as a child, as you develop, you have an identity crisis. And do you know why it's worse than ever? Because of the parents giving them a phone and letting them go on TikTok willy-nilly. No shit they're gonna be insecure about everything in their life because suddenly they have to dress like this if they want to be part of this community. And you have to look like this if you want to be gay. And you have to do this. And you gotta get surgery like this if you want to be pretty as a woman. Which is another thing I fucking hate. The fact that I can see a 14-year-old girl get lip filler already, it's not the fact that she got lip filler, it's the fact that she felt the need to get lip filler at 14 years old. What are the parents doing? Like, are the parents okay, genuinely? If you're a parent watching, like, if you don't understand what it's like to give a phone to a child, let them do whatever they want on the internet, get TikTok, their brain is just starting to understand math. <laughs> their brain is developing, their frontal lobe is nowhere near complete, so they're not gonna have a good idea of logic, because they're a, what? child so of course they're gonna grow up insecure and probably be very anxious and depressed because the shit they see online there's no way you wouldn't be okay i'm genuinely sorry for every child who has to grow up with tiktok because i don't care if you want to fit in with your group and like have a phone tiktok itself strategically changes your idea of what it is to be you your emotions are always being played with and that is not healthy for a child so if you're a parent how about you stop blaming your child for being a child and start looking on what you did to that child because y'all are not good parents and that's the reason i'm not gonna have kids i know i'm not gonna do a good job and i'd rather not fuck up a child's life and their mentality and then refuse to take blame because apparently no parent wants to blame themselves i'm getting very mad reading this. Sorry, I'm angrily eating a carrot. Also, what is this focus on, like, gender-affirming surgeries? Y'all act like men and women who are cisgender 
don't get gender affirming surgery. When a cisgender woman wants to get lip filler, that's fine, let the woman do what she wants. But when someone who is biologically male and wants to transition to be a female and gets lip filler, or some plastic surgery to be more feminine in the face, oh my god, Satan has rose up. It's a horror movie now, suddenly. Also, didn't you get like over 30 surgeries, Ollie, to look like Jimin? So that's okay then. It's okay to just want to look Korean, but God forbid you want to change your gender, oh my god. The world's gonna end, y'all. These children, they're gonna fuck us up. These children are working for China! Like, that's what you sound like. Can you listen? Okay, Siri, play Listen by Beyonce. Jesus loves you. No, he doesn't. Not me, at least. Honestly, he might. I mean, how could you not love all of this? Oh my god, oh my god. This is how he became Christian, okay. I was walking home one day and I saw people filing into a church. I got curious and thought, let me go inside. When I see people filing into a church, I'm running the other way. All the people there were friendly and happy. They seemed like they were in a good place in life and I thought, maybe I can be like that too. I think there's an underlying notion that Ollie just wants to find happiness and because he sees something that is happy like he sees these christians in the church being happy i guess he wanted some of that so that influences you to become christian i guess maybe this is bad on me for assuming but like i'm pretty sure someone who wants to go through so many surgeries and has a hard time finding their identity it's more of the idea that you are having difficulty finding what makes you happy or finding happiness within yourself and your body and that's a bigger lesson because like i do want everyone to find happiness within themselves i hope ollie has found happiness and he doesn't feel this urge to want to continue surgeries and find like the perfect face for him because girl it's not rosé or jimin okay that's you, you gotta learn that and for everyone who's watching like that is what being influenced means you idolize people to the point of oh my god i want to be that like i want to be taylor swift now <laughs> and that's harder to do when you're younger because you're so fixated on idolizing what you wish you could be you spend less time self-reflecting on yourself of saying why do i want to be like that what can I do to love myself more? And that just takes age and time, y'all. It's it's not something easy you can overcome. Look at me, I'm 21, I'm still figuring that out. I would say to those who just generally feel unhappy with their bodies and who they are, spend less time idolizing and seeing trends, especially with like in beauty and in fashion, and learn more about yourself as a person and like what makes you you and what do you like. Because you do not need to be a trend. You do not need to follow a trend or follow an aesthetic to be happy. You just need to learn how to be, like Shakespearean style. <laughs> glory to God, glory hole, you mean to God? Dylan Mulvaney is a paid actor. They are being paid millions to brainwash kids into thinking their behavior of mocking women and girls is normal and to vilify women while encouraging impressionable young teens to transition because it's trendy. But I thought you just said Dylan does not transition and has not fully transitioned. So how is Dylan telling people to transition? Uh, what? What's that I'm hearing? Oh yeah, bullshit. Y'all will gladly sit there in church on those fucking wooden chairs and say, if you don't preach to Jesus, you will go to hell. And it's like a six year old learning about that. Yeah, I wonder why your child says they're fucked up now because of you. I wonder, truly, it can't be me. I sent them to church. Church is supposed to help. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Tell that to your priest who enjoys talking to children too much. Oh, but I can't say that because drag queens also want to talk to children. Oh no, not the drag queens. I can't keep going through this. I've already looked through this Twitter for a whole hour, y'all. So my brain cells are working very hard to keep alive right now. In short, the bitch has no argument. He can never win in a debate because he has nothing to debate. Every time I see a tweet, or something about drag queens ruining children's lives or the gay community is preying on children I'm like just look at yourself because y'all are doing far more worse yes we do unholy shit in our bedroom but we're not doing the shit that y'all do in church and your priests are what pedophiles there we go don't speak to us about how to govern children when y'all can't even govern your own children in your own church because you don't know half the shit that goes on in there because y'all you're such a bad parent oh my god this is not to every parent by the way i'm sure most of y'all are lovely who are watching me but it's specifically specifically these people who are so passionate about god but also so blind to the fact that their children are literally going through the worst times of their lives probably because of that. Let me know when your children comes out about their experiences in church and how you will probably gaslight them into saying their feelings are wrong, you're right, your child is stupid. Uh-huh, sure, keep saying that. I'm sure you will be invited to their wedding if they even have a wedding. And my final thing before anyone is like, I'm Christian and I swear we're not like that. As someone who's literally had to grow up around all of that environment, the last thing I need to hear is, Oh, there are Christian people who are decent. Because all I can say to that is, wow, you're doing so much. Thank you. Like, what would you like me to say? Would you like congratulations for being a decent human being? No. Instead of telling me that you're a good Christian person, how about you 
tell your peers how to be good Christian people. I don't need to hear that you're good. Good people don't need to prove that they're good. Go talk to the other parents in the church and tell them how to be better people. Because I find it very ironic that the whole point of Christianity is how to be a good person, but they can't even learn that because stuff like this exists still. Anyways, that's my final thought. Let me know what y'all think. I know that even bringing up Ali London is already doing a lot. It's like sometimes not talking about something is better, but I can't sit here and watch that shit happen and let them get away with it. And I know my video is not going to change anything, but hopefully it brings some random person who has other beliefs than me and maybe it changes their mind. Because the last thing I want is to see this shit continue. So that's all I have for y'all today. If you enjoyed, give this video a like. Leave a comment down below about your thoughts on this. Subscribe for more videos every week. I try to post every Saturday. Social medias are all right here. Y'all should go follow them because y'all can see these good, beautiful looks. Mm, mm. I have a podcast as well. Most people don't know about it. Follow it right here. Come on. I'll wait. And as always, I love you all. And everything is less than three. I just went through Ollie's Twitter for a whole hour and yelled about it. That is my job, y'all. What am I doing with my life, actually? <laughs> Maybe Twitter should be destroyed. Elon, if you watch this somehow, please destroy Twitter and all of its being. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve any social medias, actually. In fact, destroy all humans.